Let me start with a quote. Uh, the web as we know it is being threatened. That's Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web in a recent article. He continued, and I quote, a neutral communications medium is the basis of a fair, competitive market economy, of democracy, and of science. Although the internet and web generally thrive on lack of regulation, some basic values have to be legally preserved. Today, for the first time, the FCC is adopting rules to preserve basic internet values. While the Commission had in the past pursued bipartisan enforcement of open internet principles, we have not had properly adopted rules. Now, for the first time, we'll have enforceable rules of the road to preserve internet freedom and openness. Now, to be clear, as we stand here now, the freedom and openness of the internet are unprotected. No rules on the books to protect basic internet values. No process for monitoring internet openness as technology and business models evolve. No recourse for innovators, consumers, or speakers harmed by improper practices. And no predictability for internet service providers so that they can effectively manage and invest in broadband networks. That will change once we vote to approve this strong and balanced order. The vote on the order comes after many months of debate, which has often produced more heat than light. Almost everyone says they agree that the openness of the internet is essential. That openness has unleashed an enormous wave of innovation, economic growth, job creation, small business generation, and vibrant free expression. And of course, that's right. But despite a shared allegiance to the internet as an open platform, there's been intense disagreement about the role of government in preserving internet freedom and openness. On one end of the spectrum, there are those who say government should do nothing at all on open internet. On the other end are those who would adopt uh, extensive, overly detailed and rigid regulations. A few on each side impose litmus tests. To some, unless their test is met, open internet rules are fake net neutrality. To others, unless their test is met, open internet rules are, quote, a government takeover of the internet. Now that's chutzpah, if I can borrow one of your phrases, <laughs> Commissioner McDowell. For myself, I reject both extremes in favor of a strong and sensible non-ideological framework, one that protects internet freedom and openness and promotes robust innovation and investment throughout the broadband ecosystem. Because none of these goals are abstractions. They live or die not in theory, but in practice, in the hard work of grappling with technology, business, and real-world consumer experiences. Now, in this issue, we do encounter familiar arguments. We heard some today, the kind trotted out to oppose almost any government action. Since we're dealing with nonfiction rather than fiction, uh, there are uh, many points that don't need response, but let me touch on a couple. We're told by some, for example, not to try to fix what isn't broken, and that rules of the road protecting internet freedom would discourage innovation and investment. But countless innovators, investors, and business executives say just the opposite, including many, including many who generally oppose government regulation. Over the course of this proceeding, we've heard from so many entrepreneurs, engineers, venture capitalists, CEOs, and others working daily to invent and distribute new internet products and thereby maintain US leadership in innovation. Their message has been clear. The next decade of innovation in this sector is at risk without sensible FCC rules of the road. As one leading early stage investor put it in thoughts echoed in a letter we received from 30 prominent venture capitalists, quote, the lack of basic rules of the road for what network providers and others can and can't do is starting to hamper innovation and growth. And as we heard in a letter from more than two dozen leading technology CEOs, quote, 
common sense baseline rules are critical to ensuring that the internet remains a key engine of economic growth, innovation, and global competitiveness. The innovators, entrepreneurs, and tech leaders recognize, as I do, the vital need for massive investment in broadband infrastructure. Based on their in-market experience, they also tell us that broadband providers have natural business incentives to leverage their positions as gatekeepers in ways that would stifle innovation and limit the benefits of the internet. They point out that even after the commission on a bipartisan basis announced open internet principles in 2005, we've seen clear and troubling deviations from open practices. Given the importance of an open internet to our economic future, given the potentially irreversible nature of some harmful practices, and given the competition issues among broadband providers, our record is filled with filings from businesses and consumer groups alike that it is essential that the FCC fulfill its historic role as cop on the beat to ensure the vitality of our communications networks and to empower and protect entrepreneurs and consumers of those networks. Now, at the same time, Government must not overreach by imposing rules that are overly restrictive or that assume perfect knowledge about this dynamic and rapidly changing marketplace. We know that to meet our broadband speed and deployment goals for the country, broadband providers must have the business incentives to invest many billions of dollars to build out their networks. They must have the ability to run their networks effectively and the flexibility to experiment with new business models to further drive private investment. Today, we're adopting a set of high-level rules of the road that strikes the right balance between these imperatives. We're adopting a framework that will increase certainty for businesses, investors, and entrepreneurs. In key respects, the interests of edge innovators, the entrepreneurs creating internet content services and applications, their interests, the interests of broadband providers and of American consumers are aligned. Innovation at the edge catalyzes consumer demand for broadband. Consumer demand spurs private investment and innovation in faster broadband networks and faster network sparks ever cooler innovation at the edge. I believe our action today will foster an ongoing cycle of massive investment, innovation, and consumer demand, both at the edge and in the core of broadband networks. Our action will strengthen the internet job creation engine. Our action will advance our goal of having America's broadband networks be the freest and the fastest in the world. Our action will ensure internet freedom at home a foundation for fighting for internet freedom around the world. The crux of the order we're adopting, which is based on a strong and sound legal framework rooted in the Communications Act, is straightforward. Here are the key principles it enshrines and the key rules designed to preserve internet freedom and openness. First, consumers and innovators have a right to know the basic performance characteristics of their internet access and how their network is being managed. The transparency rule we adopt today will give consumers and innovators the clear and simple information they need to make informed choices in choosing networks or designing the next killer app. Shining a light on network management practices in a non-prescriptive -pres way will also have an important deterrent effect on bad conduct. Second. Consumers and innovators have a right to send and receive lawful traffic, to go where they want, say what they want, experiment with ideas on the internet, commercial and social, and use the devices of their choice. The rules thus prohibit the blocking of lawful content, apps, services, and the connection of devices to the network. Third, consumers and innovators have a right to a level playing field. No central authority, public or private, should have the power to pick winners or losers on the internet. That's the role of the commercial market and the marketplace of ideas. So we're adopting a ban on unreasonable discrimination, 
and we're making clear that we're not approving so-called pay-for-priority arrangements involving fast lanes for some companies, but not others. The order states that as a general rule, such arrangements won't satisfy the no unreasonable discrimination standard because it simply isn't consistent with an open internet for broadband providers to skew the marketplace by favoring one idea or application or service over another by selectively prioritizing internet traffic. Fourth, the rules recognize that broadband providers need meaningful flexibility to manage their networks to deal with congestion, security, and other issues. And we also recognize the importance and value of business model experimentation, such as tiered pricing. These are practical necessities and will help promote investment in and expansion of high-speed broadband networks. So for, the example, so for example, the order makes clear that broadband providers can engage in reasonable network management, providing certainty. Fifth, the principle of internet openness applies to mobile broadband. There's been some confusion on this, so let me be clear. There is one internet, and it must remain an open platform, however consumers and innovators access it. And so today we're adopting for the first time broadly applicable rules requiring transparency for mobile broadband providers and consumers and prohibiting mobile broadband providers from blocking websites or blocking certain competitive applications. As I have said for many months, as many innovators and entrepreneurs have told us in the record, and as the facts and record bear out, there are differences between mobile and fixed broadband that are relevant in determining what action government should take for mobile at this time. Among the differences, unique technical issues involving spectrum and mobile networks, the stage and rate of innovation in mobile broadband, and market structure. Also, one of the largest mobile broadband providers has just begun providing 4G service using wireless spectrum subject to openness conditions adopted in connection with the auction of that spectrum. Importantly, our order makes clear that we are not endorsing or approving practices that the order doesn't prohibit, particularly conduct that is barred for fixed broadband. And we affirm our commitment to an ongoing process to ensure the continued evolution of mobile broadband in a way that's consistent with internet freedom and openness. Any reduction in mobile internet openness would be a cause for concern, as would any reduction in innovation and investment in mobile broadband applications, devices, or networks that depend on internet openness. Sixth, and finally, today's order recognizes the importance of vigilance. Vigilance in promptly enforcing the rules we're adopting, and vigilance in monitoring developments in areas such as mobile and the market for specialized services, which may affect internet openness. That's why I'm pleased that we've committed to create an open internet advisory committee that will assist the commission in monitoring the state of openness and the effects of our rules. We're also launching an open internet apps challenge on challenge.gov that will foster private sector development of applications to empower consumers with information about their own broadband connections, which will also help protect internet openness. The rules of the road we adopt today are rooted in ideas first articulated by Republican Chairman Michael Powell and Kevin Martin and endorsed in a unanimous FCC policy statement in 2005. And they are grounded in the record we have developed over the past 14 months, including more than 100,000 public comments, numerous public workshops, and hundreds of meetings with stakeholders ranging across the spectrum. The list of participants uh, also includes supportive input from the FTC and DOJ to the uh, opposite effect of what we heard earlier. Uh, the chairman of the FTC participated in person in our proceedings. I am proud of the process that we and the staff have run at the commission. It's been one of the most transparent in FCC history. And I'm proud of the result, which has already garnered broad support from the technology industry, including TechNet, the Information Technology Industry Council, the Internet Innovation Alliance, and the hundreds of technology companies those groups represent, as well as many other technology and internet companies. Support from investors of all sizes, including some of the nation's preeminent venture capitalists and angel investors. Our framework has also drawn support from key consumer, labor, and civil rights groups, a list that includes the Consumer Federation of America, Consumers Union, 
the Center for Democracy and Technology and the Communication Workers of America. I thank them and the other groups that have worked so hard for many months on this issue. And our framework has been supported by a number of broadband providers as well who recognize the sensible balance of our action and the value of bringing a level of certainty to this fraught issue. Our action today culminates recent efforts to find common ground on this challenging issue here at the FCC, as well as by private parties and in Congress. I thank each of those who took their time over the last several months to take on these difficult issues seeking to bridge gaps and find solutions, and who supported us in our efforts to do the same. I want to praise and thank my colleagues, Commissioner Copps and Clyburn, particularly for their vigor and constancy in pushing this commission to focus on the interests of consumers. Your work has certainly improved our rules and order. I'm glad, Commissioner Clyburn, that you mentioned the Open Internet Advisory Committee because that uh, idea came out of uh, discussions that we had and I think it'll be an important part of our ongoing processes. Uh, Commissioners McDowell and Baker, as you pointed out, this commission does tend to agree uh, overwhelmingly uh, on the issues before us uh, and I look forward to working together on a series of items to serve the public and grow our economy. I can't express enough appreciation to the remarkable staff of the FCC who have worked so hard and so well to wrestle with difficult issues and turn complex ideas into simple rules. Even as at this commission, we have done more than one thing at once. It's been uh, an extraordinary challenge for so many of the staff uh, at the commission uh, and we can't honor your service enough. That includes many offices and bureaus at the FCC, uh, some represented uh, by the leadership here on the panel today, uh, many others uh, 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 working hard behind them, uh, including our Office of General Counsel, our Office of Strategic Planning, our Office of Engineering and Technology, and the Wireline, Wireless, Media, Consumer, International Bureaus. Uh, broadband is horizontal. It stretches across the Commission. We find increasingly that almost everything that we work on requires coordination and collaboration among our staff uh, and we see that in a healthy, productive, interactive way from issues easy to hard, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Let me join my colleagues in uh, thanking all the staff on the eighth floor, and in, particularly, and in particular, the extraordinary team I'm lucky to have in the chairman's office. Eddie Lazarus, Rick Kaplan, Zach Katz, Josh Gottheimer, Jen Howard, Maria Gaglio, Daniel Ornstein, you've each gone well above and beyond the call of duty, uh, keeping a wonderful sense of humor uh, every day, uh, a terrific spirit. Uh, you make each other smarter. You make me a lot smarter. Uh, I thank you for that. I apologize to your families, but I know they join me in honoring your service. Thanks to the work of these incredible public servants. Uh, thanks uh, to our new media office, which has uh, worked uh, around the clock since the beginning of this proceeding to make sure that uh, everything that we do is available online. Uh, we've set a new precedent, not just at the FCC, but around government uh, in the ways that we've opened up uh, this proceeding, permitting people to file comments online, uh, to participate interactively online. Uh, uh, the new media team makes it look uh, easy uh, to the people who participate. Uh, but it's very, very hard to do, especially given uh, the infrastructure challenges we have at the FCC. So I thank each of you uh, for your work under the leadership of Steve Van Roekel. Thanks to the work of all of the incredible public servants uh, uh, I mentioned, today a strengthened FCC is adopting rules to ensure that the Internet remains a powerful platform for innovation and job creation, to empower consumers and entrepreneurs, and protect free expression. These rules will increase certainty in the marketplace, spur investment both at the edge and in the core of our broadband networks, and contribute to a 21st century job creation engine in the United States. Finally, these rules fulfill many promises, including a promise to the future, 
a promise to the companies that don't yet exist and the entrepreneurs who haven't yet started work in their dorm rooms or garage. For all that, I will be very proud to cast my vote. And with that, let's proceed to a vote. Uh, all those uh, in favor, say aye or concur. Concur. In part. Oh. Oh. <laughs> trigger, trigger finger. All those opposed, <laughs> say nay. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. I apologize for that. So ordered. The request for editorial privileges is uh, granted.